Hi, my name is Richard Bonk, and I happen to run into a, an interesting fellow out here, so I, and a special guest. Um, <laughs> Dr. John Lilly. <laughs> and uh, he wanted to apologize uh, to the doctors about any problems that he may have caused. Um, and he also wanted to say he was pretty impressed with the showing here, and he wanted to encourage people who were thinking about starting float centers to go ahead and do that. And he said the, the people at Float On were pretty cool, pretty cool guys. And uh, for the people who are here and haven't floated, he said, what are you doing here? Go float. <laughs> so anyhow, I wanted to, and he says hi to Glenn and, and Lee, too, by the way. And, and I also wanted to thank Glenn and Lee for their constant support over the years and uh, the float, float on people. And also um, Terry Burks, who I'm here with, who has supported me and many hundreds of floaters in the Minneapolis, Minnesota area. So thanks for that. So uh, I forgot the first part on the slide, but it's uh, floating for lucidity introducing the alternate waking states induction method, or awesome, and I heard that word a lot this conference, so it seems appropriate. So what is awesome? And it's uh, basically a simple uh, mechanistic mechanism to induce um, alternate waking states with a regularity that can be examined in, in controlled situations and and in your own home or, or in flotation tank facilities. Um, so what are, I, I guess I should backtrack and say, well, well, what are alternate waking states? And I want to differentiate between alternate waking states and altered states. Um, Dr. Sudfeld talked about the movie Altered States, and, and you kind of hear that jargon amongst floaters, that at least I have, and I've been floating for about 30 years. And and from my perspective, um, I think it's important to distinguish because uh, the, the states that we experience in a flotation tank and, and otherwise are really normal states. It's just that um, in a flotation tank they may be accentuated or expanded upon. So I think it's really, it's, it's really a part of our natural um, daily existence. So some examples of alternate waking states for the purpose of this are, and some, some people earlier were talking about this, lucid dreams, uh, out-of-body experiences, near-death equivalent experiences, states of absorption, states of expansion, and other kinds of meditative states. And I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that out-of-body experiences are out-of-body experiences, but, but they seem to be uh, they have a phenomena that's, that's similar across the board and, and people who experience that sort of things. So a brief history of the alternate staking or wake, waking state induction method are awesome. Um, I worked uh, about 30 years ago, a little more than 30 years ago at the Medical College of Ohio in Toledo, which at that time was kind of known as the sensory deprivation capital. Um, there was a cartoon in our lab, and I worked for John Turner and, and Tom Fine, and there was a cartoon, something to the effect that said, um, uh, they were talking about flotation, sensory deprivation, and said it's just like being in Toledo, Ohio. And, <laughs> and uh, living in Toledo, Ohio, I can attest to that. Um, and uh, the, the acronym, the awesome acronym, um, came from a discussion with uh, John Turner, because I, I was... Uh, uh, kind of serendipitously playing around and developing this, this technique and, and it was calling it the alternate waking state induction technique and he said, well, why not call it awesome? And I thought, yeah, you know, people will remember that. Um, so that's kind of how that started. I had a long-term interest in meditation and consciousness studies like, ever since uh, young adulthood. So when I, was, when I had the opportunity to, to experience a tank myself when we were running medical students through or, or research subjects, I thought, wow, this is a perfect environment for meditation because it takes away a lot of the things that you struggle with in meditation, um, namely sensory excitation. And I started to have um, spontaneous 
uh, alternate waking states in a tank, like uh, what seemed to be described as out-of-body experiences. And so I was interested in that, and I thought, well, is there a way that I could um, induce that kind of state with some regularity so I could see what's going on and maybe uh, introduce it to other people and we could, and, uh, we could see what, what would come out of that. Uh, about the same time, I was reading this book, and maybe some of you have, have heard of um, Dr. Stephen Labarge, and uh, he's done a lot of research on lucid dreams, and he has this technique called the monomic induction of lucid dreams, which is more of like a, a mental kind of reminding yourself that, well, if I go back to sleep, I'm going to wake up in my dreams. And so I was experimenting with that, and I, and I had some limited success, but... Um, I also had access to a flotation tank when we upgraded at the Medical College of Ohio. I was able to take that, uh, the original um, Samadhi tank, uh, looked like the black Samadhi tank in uh, Lee and Glenn's presentation, and I had that in my apartment. So uh, what I did was I, um, well, I, I thought, well, instead of um, going back to sleep, and trying to induce these lucid dreams, why don't I get up and shower and go into the tank? And so I, I, I did that, and immediately it, was, it, it worked. It was like, it was um, automatic. And so I was thinking, well, maybe this is the wet induction of lucid dream or wild. So I guess I'm a, an, an acronym, an acronym um, addict. So, the similarities and differences, like the mild technique, the awesome takes advantages of normal sleep-waking cycles and facilitates lucidity in, in states of consciousness that are normally semi or unconscious. And unlike mild, it appears that the monomic methods and other specific mindsets or beliefs are not necessary to, fa to facilitate these alternate waking states. Rather, if certain mechanistic variables are met, the awesome experience will occur with high regularity, which is what we were looking for. So this is basically the, the technique in a nutshell. Um, so you want to assure for a normal night's sleep, um, so you get a sense of what you know, your hours are. Um, gently awaken in the last third of your sleep cycle. So that's, that, that's when the REM period is going to be a, a lot longer. So then you spend a few minutes in normal waking state, ensure that you have a balanced mindset, calm yet alert. And I found that a warm shower usually works. And, and for people who don't have access to tank and tanks in their home, and I know I float on and some other places are open all night, or you can come in in the morning, it seems that it's okay um, if you have, even if you're traveling to the, to the tank, as long as you kind of keep a relaxed state. So you don't want to be drink. You don't want to be highly caffeinated. You don't want to be very excited. You don't want to get stressed out in traffic. But if you can maintain that relaxed state, and then you go into the tank and you just kind of let go, and then if you re-enter the sleep cycle, it seems like you have about 80% chance of waking up, uh, quote unquote, waking up in an alternate waking state. And th this seemed to be true for myself as well as other people at the medical college that I in introduced this technique to. Um, a couple of helpful tips if you want to try this on your own. So again, it's uh, cultivating this state of an, and what I was calling ca calm mental resolve. So this would help if fear arises, which it typically does for many of us, and also when distractions occur. Um, it can be helpful to begin by establishing an intention. Uh, I, I guess this is sort of a monomic te um, technique, but that it's okay to kind of have like, well, you know, I want to maintain this calm mental resolve. If something happens, I'm going to stay calm and relaxed. Um, but importantly, it's, it's best not to have an agenda. And uh, like Lee and Glenn were saying, I mean, John Lee said, you know, don't encourage the, the programming. And so it's, it's important to just have an open mind. Uh, getting too excited will abort the experience. Like sometimes when you, when you, when you, find yourself entering into these different spaces, you get all excited, and that will stop it. Um, and uh, I notice if, if, a gentle, if the gentle focus is lost, awareness will fade and unconsciousness will occur. You'll, you'll start cycling back into your regu regular sleep. 
So the way I like to th think of it is kind of like you have a couple dials, like on the old-fashioned radios or TVs. You want to gently turn down the excitation dial, and then you want to gently turn up the awareness dial. So some phenomena that I've found and, and uh, other people have found when entering the alternate waking states is uh, body paralysis, which is common when you're entering the sleep cycle, um, and then the sensation of waking from sleep. There is often a sense of increasing vibratory energy, like um, it's almost like um, uh, your body, you, I use the word vibratory because it does seem like like something is happening where there's where it's it's expanding its vibratory state there is often a sense of expanded auditory or odd sounds occur uh, and that kind of would would let me know that 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 I'm about to enter this state and <clears throat> when it was first happening uh, spontaneously at this point uh, it, well it felt like 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 there is a, a, a sense of expanding expanded energy and what's going to happen, you know, I think it's kind of like a knee-jerk response to like the, your, your body, mind is afraid of injury or death or whatever it is, and so there's kind of a knee-jerk response. So fear is a, is a big element there. So when you, when you experience that fear and it's very palpable, you won't, um, that's when that remembering that intention to remain a calm, rent, or a calm mental resolve is important. And once you've gone beyond that fear, you're, you're not too excited where you've aborted the experience where, you, where, you've, wake, where you've awoken, you didn't um, cycle back into the sleep, or sleep state, then you're at that point where it's kind of like, um, the way I like to look at it is a portal of the spectral consciousness. And by spectral consciousness, it's kind of like you're at, at a space where you can go well, many directions, but it's seen basically two directions. One is in the direction of, of lucid dreaming, or the other is in the direction of more like the, how the out-of-body experiences are described. The difference is being that if you cycle into the lucid dream states, then it's, it's more like a dream world. Like if you were to look at a clock, the clock may change into a tomato or whatever it is. But in, in, uh, if you go to the out-of-body um, side of that spectrum, if you look at the clock, the clock stays a stable clock. Uh, when you're actively in these, this alternate waking state, you still have the con continued body paralysis, but you, all, but you have access to your full cognitive abil ability, so you have the sense of, of self, if you want that, and y you can think, you know, you, you have emotions, um, there's a sense of a second body, and I don't know how else to describe this, but um, a second body with equi equivalent physical sensations. Um, typically, there's a he uh, heightened sensuality, so that, that's very interesting, but it also can be a, uh, a barrier, because as you imagine something in that state, you can, actually, you can actually create it in a very real fashion, so fantasies can uh, it, it's like it, it's like uh, uh, imagining uh, your process in visualization, but turning up that dial. So visualization is is a lot of you have known probably have tried. It can be very effective, but in this state, you know, it really cranks it up. So it becomes very equivalent to normal waking reality, and uh, and often you have this felt ability to, to move through space, like if it if you're going towards the out of body side of this spectrum, and the dream imagery and the dream stories start to occur if you go towards the lucid dream. Uh, sometimes you have this felt ability, which is very interesting, to, to move through perceived objects or surfaces. Uh, like in normal waking consciousness, if I'm touching this podium, you know, I have a very, I have a sense that this is very solid. Uh, and in this particular alternate waking state, uh, I can touch the per this perceived um, podium, but I can also put my finger through it, and, and you have the sense that's equivalent to like touching the surface, but of the finger going through it, which is a very peculiar sense. And if you go through the tank wall, it has a, an interesting uh, 
sensory experience if you go through drywall or glass or whatever, and this all may be happening, of course, internally, but it's still, it, it's very interesting because it seems to be equivalent to normal waking consciousness. And you have the, the felt ability to levitate or fly, which is, of course, would be a very interesting experience for many people. Um, peculiar phenomena that I've noticed, and I've also read in some of the literature, people experimenting with lucid dreams, there, there seems to be an attraction to electromagnetic sources. Um, like, for example, I've had many experiences where I felt like I was out flying around and there were these high tension lines out uh, over, and I'd get stuck on these high tension lines. And I don't know why, and then, it, you know, and I thought, well, maybe that's, maybe I'm moving into a lucid dream state, and this is peculiar to my dream-making symbology. But then I, I read um, in reports of other lucid dreamers who had the same kind of experience. I don't know what that's about, but it, it does seem, a, you know, a peculiar phenomena there. Uh, also, you seem to have access to multiple levels of consciousness that are defined and constrained by conceptual frameworks. And what I meant, what I, as an example of that is, is I had a number of experiences where I would get stuck on these high tension lines and then I thought, well, maybe this is part of my conceptual framework. Uh, and almost as soon as I realized that, it was, like, it was like an aspect of this body, whatever it was that was attracted and stuck on these high tension lines would just fall away and it was, and and so there seems to be different layers of uh, mind that are, cons that are defined and constrained by your concepts. I don't, I don't know, but it, it, it is a peculiar thing that there are certain peculiar phenomena that seem to be, uh, that seem to confine and define that we can move beyond. So anyhow, interesting stuff, I thought. And also um, that, that, you know, that I can reproduce this kind of phenomenon at, at about 80% regularity and, and other people seem to be able to as well. So some of the potentials I see in this is that um, it offers access to discrete and ephemeral states of consciousness. Uh, and again, I don't think they're altered states, it's, it's states that we go through at least twice a day, you know, or when we're going to sleep and when we're waking up. And the tank seems to, especially using the awesome technique or method in the tank seems to, um, well, it blends the conscious and the unconscious. It's, it's, it stabilizes and sustains, or this is what it seems like, the, um, the hypnagogic state. So rather than you going through it just in a matter of a few seconds, you know, you hang out there. Um, so the, it seems like there's a potential for mind mapping, um, offers potential to and this is another interesting thing, you know, what, what I noticed in fa fantasy exploration is it offers potential access to autonomic nervous system and related physiological processes. Like in that state, it's, it's again, it's like cranking up the dial on uh, visualization. So it's not just imagining that, but you can actually, you can actually um, see physiological processes or experience those changing. So, Seems like it has potential for psi research and application. Uh, potential to complement and enhance meditative disciplines, and that's a particular interest of mine at this point. Uh, and also it seems like because it is a mechanistic thing, it doesn't require that you believe in out-of-body experiences or what have you. If you fulfill certain mechanistic variables, that these kind of experiences will happen with a high regularity. Um, so two invitations I wanted to put out there is to, number one, try awesome on your own if you'd like, if you have access to tanks where you can interrupt the sleep cycle and get into the tank. Uh, and I'd be very interested in what you experience if you do decide to try that. Um, number two is to join the alternate waking states investigation matrix, another awesome. And actually this came from Lee her suggestion, because I thought, well, if we had a group of people who were doing this, what would we call it? And, and this is what came to my mind. So this is what I'm proposing, um, the what, why, where, and when, and how. So it would be a transdisciplinary committee of the um, U.S. Float Tank Association, that's the FTA, 
is that what it's called? Um, to investigate and apply findings and share information about alternate waking states and to explore and apply why is to explore and apply alternate waking states and its potentials and who committed floaters willing to dedicate time to their individual explorations and to share in a group matrix and where anywhere there is access to float tanks and or supportive technologies that I'm thinking that wouldn't necessarily have to be wet float tanks. Um, so obviously we could communicate using the current media and, and also meet in person. And when, if people are interested, we can begin to organize now and have regular conference calls and or online meetings. And um, Lee had suggested making or offering this as a, a committee, a subcommittee underneath the FTA. And if you're interested, talk to me at the conference or there's my email there. And a couple of details about that. If, if we were a group, um, a, a committee under FTA that would allow us for possible grant funding. And having a group of explorers may assist in expanding and refining the process. And having a group of explorers may assist in identifying common phenomena. Because if I, I, what, what I've noticed and what I wanted to move away from is it seems like uh, when people are involved in, in and working with the tank or other kinds of techniques, often there's a, a powerful insight that occurs to us, which is very valid. Um, however, I think that, that, our, that our mind often will spin off whole conceptual systems and worlds and um, belief systems are, and religions are, are, are all spin-offs of maybe one or two powerful insights. And so uh, what I'm proposing is that we would have a group to kind of like a peer review group where we would kind of um, act as uh, a support for one another. And we could offer that kind of you know, criticism or critiques. Uh, and if we, if we had a group that we could develop a common language of alternate, alternate waking states, uh, a group could encourage, and this is, this is the point I was talking about, a group could encourage and recognize valid insights um, but also prevent ind individual members from generating problematic conceptual systems, so spinning out. Um, and group members could utilize individual skills to assume committee roles and address organizational needs. And there would be potentials for, for mentoring, partnering, and community, and potentials for research studies and publications, potentials for partnering with complementary organizations. And I guess, you know, I'm, I'm seeing this too as, uh, well, um, I guess this slide goes more into it. You know, there's astronauts, and I'm at one point when when I 30 years ago we were we were looking at doing some re research, some um, inner research, and we were calling ourselves psychonauts. Well, that probably doesn't sound so good, um, but awesome knot might be kind of cool. Um, so, do you have what it takes to be an awesome knot? And that would be. Um, and of course, this is me thinking about it, so um, th th this may be a limited um, and, and, and maybe biased perspective, but committed to exploring consciousness. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean only the, the flotation, or use, utilizing the flotation tank. Um, Open-minded and curious, yet skeptical and discriminating. Um, ability to cultivate the objective observer and a data collector and importantly, to defer to the scientific method, but also open to meditative and contemplative processes, because in the traditional meditative and con contemplative traditions, there's a, well, a couple thousand years of, of, of history of people doing this kind of work, and so why reinvent the wheel? Why not um, you know, marry these two processes up, the, using the flotation tank and the meditative contemplative traditions? and willing to work with a peer group and willing to educate the public, uh, willing to support the group with your individual skills and resources. And creativity is, an, is important to me, and I, I would like to see it as part of this group. And I guess the bottom line here you know, is, is courage, because when you're exploring these aspects of yourself, um, in my experience and the people that I've worked with, I mean, you are sometimes confronting aspects of yourself that are not necessarily very comfortable 
And sometimes you can evoke this physiological, biological, psychological fear response because you're, you're moving to, into realms that, you're, that typically we're not looking at in our, in, our, in, our daily, in our daily lives. So here's a couple links and contacts. I do have a website, but it's mostly related to the art that I'm working on. And there's an example there. Um, but the top link is, is kind of hidden in my website, and it's a full paper that actually I presented at the last IRIS, was it the IRIS conference in San Francisco? But anyhow, there's a link to the full paper and information on lucid dreams. And if anybody has any questions or would like to talk to me later about that, I would be very happy. And, and tomorrow, Lee and Glenn are going to talk about the FTA. And so if anybody is interested in, a, in forming a committee. FTA section tomorrow. FTA section tomorrow. All right. Thank you.